Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about these louvers. These are the louvers in the Jag hood that we're making. They're a vital component of the whole process. So uh, when we started, we didn't have a louver press in the shop, and uh, I have a volunteer, Frank. He lives about six or seven miles away, and uh, he loves coming to the shop. He loves learning new skill sets, and. Uh, I said, Frank, you're up for making a louver press. Well, he made the louver press, and then after you make the louver press, which I'll show you in a minute, well, the next step is to make the louver dies. So, first thing we did was make a three inch louver die, sort of based on what these louvers look like. And if you study louvers, there's about probably 100 different variants of louvering of how they're shaped and how they're organized and everything else and on flat surfaces, curved surfaces and different lengths and there's a lot to louvering. So making the die, that's a, a, a learning curve that you gotta uh, go through and um, I, I had made a die probably 20 years ago or so but I remembered a little bit from that and uh, so Frank and I had been working our way through it and Frank's been doing all the work and we both come up with ideas what to do. So the three inch die worked really sweet. This is on aluminum and that's on steel. Now these aren't lined up, we just didn't care, we just popped them out one at a time. And every, everything that we, we uh, did, we, we learned a new little fact and how to tweak the die and stuff. So after we were happy with the results from the three inch die, then we said, okay, well, let's face the music and see if we can make the 8-inch die. Now, I only had a 5-ton cylinder in the press. That's something I had hanging around. And that was cutting the 5-inch, especially uh, the 3-inch, in, uh, in aluminum very easy. We didn't know if it'll cut the 8-inch or not. So it turned out it didn't cut the 8-inch. So we had to go up to a 10-ton cylinder on it. And we'll show you the press in a minute. And these were some of the first uh, cuts with the 8-inch die that Frank did. And there's a few little mistakes in it that we still need to tune the die. And uh, Frank's been working on that. So let's go take a look at the, the louver press and see what's going on over there. All right, here's the press. Frank did a beautiful job on it. And uh, here's the 10-ton rim and the 9 or the 5-ton was right here. We just uh, had no clue whether or not that would do the job. It turned out it didn't do the job. So I just happened to have, I'm a good collector, I happened to have a 10 ton rim around. I bought it years ago on eBay, probably about 15 years ago for some other purpose, but it never got work used. So this is the new 8 inch die and for it to work properly, the clearance between the cutting blades uh, has to be about one or two thousandths of an inch. And we uh, made the whole thing here. I had some uh, 01 tool steel. We have a little um, electric heat treating oven. And that 01 uh, tool steel was pretty easy to heat treat. And we get a nice uh, 60 plus Rockwell. We uh, temper it back in a regular uh, oven. Uh, a, a, a home cooking oven that we have here. And uh, Frank's been experimenting with uh, with the press and especially you know the aluminum went really well but when he went to steel he had results like this these were obvious failures what happened here was um, the gap which was adjusted properly but uh, the hold downs on, en on enough to to hold the pressures that are created when you do steel so you set your, your clearance, you tighten this down, and you actuate it, and it forces this die forward, which opens the clearance up, which causes a disaster like this. So now what we're doing is we're going to have an adjustable locking uh, bit on it here. Tomorrow, Frank should get that done, and we should be in good shape. So uh, he was you know, having that problem you lock it tighter and it's still you would get these failures where the, the clearance would open up and then it basically the metal rides between it rather than shearing it off. So 
it's a long learning process to get them just right. And to do a louver longer than eight inches uh, is going to probably require more tonnage on the on the ram also. Um, so Frank should get those stops in tomorrow. They'll be adjustable, and that'll lock it. And we should be good to go. Now, one other thing I want to point out, which is a neat little thing, something I learned about 20 years ago. And if Mark can do a little close-up right here. Um, you see this spring here. This spring didn't have loops on it. Um, but a lot of springs do have the loops. And what will happen sometimes is the loops break, break off. So once I was at the scrapyard, it probably had to be 25 years ago. And there was a nice spring there, and I said, oh boy, I could use that. And I looked at the other end, one end, and the end, the loop was broken off, but somebody had made this little wind-in wire deal like this, if, you, if Mark can get a uh, close-up of that. And the way that works is this is just, I think, 3 seconds welding wire. So, well, it might be a little bit, that's 8-inch wire, I believe. Uh, eighth inch rod. You bend that up real easy with a pair of pliers and you can just twist it in and that's much stronger than an actual loop. So I use that trick a lot on a lot of springs. Uh, the, the spring end breaks or you have to adjust the spring so say you cut it off here you can put your loop any way you want with it. It's just a, a nice little hack that works really good in the shop so I figured I'd point that out. Thanks for watching. It's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper in Charlton.